Ladies and gentlemen, well, we don't have a regular clock up. Oh, it's over there. It's uh, 6.32. Welcome. Let's please begin our, our meeting uh, for the City Council, Calexico Community Redevelopment Agency, Successor Agency, Calexico Financing Authority, regular meeting September 3rd, 2013, and approximately 6.32. Uh, we'll, I'll defer for closed session to our attorney. Mrs. Thank you, Lyon. Mr. Mayor. Council met in closed session and discussed items A through C. Direction was given. No reportable action was taken. Thank you. All right. We have call to order and attendance. Looking about, all council members are present. Will we please stand for the flag salute? And uh, I'll just lead it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, that's all, please. Thank you, young men. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we have a, a timer up there for the public and the city council members. Again, uh, we want to keep it to three minutes. If you go a little over, I'll be nice to, want to let you know that you've gone over. And uh, I just expect you to have the, the self-regulation to wrap it up as soon as possible. Uh, I must say before we begin that uh, unfortunately, the presentation that was listed here by Carmen Estrada regarding parks improvement will have to be postponed. Unfortunately, I was just informed that one of their main coaches has had an automobile accident and uh, I was told that he is in, he, I guess, is in serious or critical condition. So that's all the detail I know. So please have that individual in your prayers and I guess we'll find out more, but anyway, that presentation will be scheduled for the next meeting. Now let's go back. Announcements, public appearances, and public comments. Oh, I'm, I, what now? Oh, that's right. Defer to our city council for a closed session. No, Mayor, I, I move that we approve the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry, approval of the agenda. I got thrown off because I heard that. Okay. Uh, discussion. We have an approval for the agenda. Yes, I have a discussion on the agenda. You have a, are you seconding? Seconding with the discussion, sir? You can do that. Yeah, okay, second for the discussion. Okay, please discuss. Okay, first of all, the by the time, by the our the agenda policies, when the city council member at the meeting concurred by the other council member, it should be the agenda. There is four agenda have been requested in the coming in here. The one of the uh, agenda, the agenda policy, I gave them the uh, change it. They're supposed to bring this one. This time it's not coming. And park and street repair plan to come in here, this uh, agenda, they're not posted. And annexation supposed to be coming this time to with the detail, detail it's not, it didn't come. And I was asking the, about a month ago, the subsidizing our local uh, transportation is not in the agenda. I can answer that, sir. And that it's been it's been two months, uh, two uh, more than months. They're not uh, putting in here, and the city city uh, mayor doesn't have any overpower to the, our policies. Policies say the council member concurred by other council member. It should be in the agenda. It's not there. Okay. And even the water bill today, we have an agenda. I've been requested a month and a half ago by initially the, our mayorship to using overpowers is the, 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 dealing to with the, all the issues not important for the community's benefit. I believe that we have to, the council, we have to follow by the policies. The uh, mayor doesn't have overpower over the other uh, one of us. You're, okay. You, you are correct, uh, Councilman Kim. Uh, 
I have not personally put a stop to any of the items. For instance, the one dealing with uh, funding for local transportation. Uh, we had a meeting with uh, City Manager Oscar Rodriguez, myself, and Councilman Castro. And what we found out is, like with many items, um, it, it takes time to do the research, sir. Uh, some, some may seem that they should have been on right away, and you might have a point. But other items, they're just not on because it takes time uh, for the staff to do that. Um, so that's what I have to say to that point. You've said your, your point, so. Uh, well, I've been asked a month ago. Well, how long will I need the time to All right, to let, me, let me defer to City Manager uh, Oscar Rodriguez. Any response to Councilman Kim's concerns, sir? Well, I know that the agenda policy, the changes were provided to uh, the City Attorney and myself just recently, and as I, we spoke the, the prior time, um, that if you recall, the policy calls for items to be on the agenda are to be turned in by the following day after the council meeting. So for example, for the next meeting, the deadline is tomorrow. And so we need time to prepare some of these documentations. So that one we are preparing and we, I believe that will be at the next meeting. Uh, the annexation issue is over with planning and so I'll find out, but I'm hoping to schedule that for the next meeting also. The parks issue, Sandra is not here, I don't see her. Uh, but we were hoping that that would be on the next uh, agenda. And the transportation issue you just addressed. And, the, and I believe that one we agreed that that would be on the next agenda. Okay. That's I, right. I, I, I acknowledge that the deadline. Do we had a deadline uh, uh, accepted? We never, uh, never bring the agenda by deadline. By the policy said, the check no later than 5 p.m. on the 11th day prior to the meeting, which is we supposed this uh, backup items last Friday, last week Friday, not the last week, I mean 11 days before the meeting. We didn't receive it. So that deadline, uh, deadline based on the same week of the agenda bring back to us. Okay. I agenda bring back to us to last Friday, that means we have deadline by the last Wednesday. So I followed the rules by the couple, before, couple days before the agenda delivered, and they didn't do it. Okay. Very good, Councilman Kim. We, we duly note what you're saying. I think maybe uh, I can get with city manager, and it'd be a good idea for all of us at an appropriate time to go over all of this, not, but not to do it in front of the public. But we do have to get clear about uh, the agenda and the timelines. And, and Councilman, I mean, excuse me, uh, uh, City Manager uh, Rodriguez, we had to speak about maybe ways of improving communication. One, one is our responsibility to follow up and see if, if, if our staff members are working on our items. We shouldn't just blurt it out here and then put it in their lap and, and think that they're going to get it done on time. We need to follow up. But I don't want to get into that. We have a, a meeting to go, and, and it's my job to keep this moving. So the motion was made. There's a second. So uh, we have had discussion. So please vote. Second for approval, I guess. OK. Oops. OK. The agenda is approved for one uh, with the dissent by Councilman uh, Kim, duly noted because of his concerns. Okay, uh, time for me to read this. Um, announcements, public appearances, and public comments. Not to exceed three minutes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for your benefit. We have a timer at the back of the wall there so that you can rather than us keep telling you, hey, your time's almost up, that can be irritating. You can look at that timer, you can self-regulate, you can process, and, and know when your time is, is up. Okay, uh, this is the time for the public to address the council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. The mayor will recognize you, and when you come to the microphone, please state your name, and place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful 
to disturb or delay the council meeting with personal or slanderous remarks. If the item you wish to comment on is a closed session or a consent item, please comment now. If the item you wish to comment on is on the public portion of the agenda, we will take your comment when we get to the item on the agenda. Please direct your questions and comments to the city, city council. And as mayor, I'm going to continue to somewhat be a broken record. On, uh, we are improving, but again, council, uh, do not make any uh, statements that you are alluding to any personal intentions among other city council. Please give respect uh, to each and every one of you. Do not over talk over each other. Councilman uh, Moreno, you have a wonderful sense of memory, but back off on your mockery. Councilman uh, Kim, uh, again, we don't want to keep repeating. If there's repetition, I, I will note that out. My job to move this along, and that's what I'm going to do. So here we go. Public comments. I have one. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, is this for right now? Water? No. This is for uh, an item on the agenda. So uh, again, is there anybody that has public comments in general that's not on the agenda? Okay. All right. Very good, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move on to presentations. We have we have a. a we have some fine young men there, and we are very proud of them. We're going to have a presentation to Colexico All-Stars requested by Mr. Bulldog himself, Councilman Moreno. Take the lead on this, sir. Thank you, Mayor Hodge. I um, was at several of the games that this group of young men played at in July and in June, and it so happened that during the second meeting of July, I believe it was, uh, they were still in the playoffs. And so I had talked to some of the coaches and some of the league representatives that uh, we were to honor them uh, as soon as they finished the league. Inadvertently, be because we were dark the first Tuesday in August, we couldn't do it then. And then we had a miscommunication August 20th. But better late than never, That's right. these all-stars are here today and I'd like to congratulate them, first of all, and congratulate their coach, Aldo Silva. Uh, Aldo, could you please stand? Let's give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. You want, you want to come up to the mic, sir? And I would, I would uh, either he would read the names or I could read the names, however you want to do it. Okay, then, then you go well, ahead and do it. Here, here are the certificates for you, sir. And as they... And as they come up, they can get their certificate over there and shake hands with the council and stand up here in front, and there'll be time for a photo shoot. That's just and, like being uh, in Hollywood. You don't have three minutes. You have a little more. Yeah, since you have a good amount of all-stars. All right. Um, can I give my other coach over here, my other two coaches, uh, George Villanueva and uh, Luis Gracia. I mean, uh, during the Little League season, it takes, a, I mean, a lot of effort. Uh, and these two guys help me out a lot. So uh, without them, obviously, we can't move forward. And how many do I have? 11, right? All right. Uh, most of these kids are, uh, they vary from ages. They're soon to be 12, some of them. Some of them are 10, from 10, 11, 12. At the age that we competed was uh, 10 and 11, 10 and 11. So pretty much uh, anywhere from fourth grade, fifth and sixth. So uh, last year we won it. We won the, the, our division again. We went to San Diego, pretty much got handed to us really bad. They, they learned their, their experience where uh, you lose two games, you're out of the tournament. And obviously, you're facing the best of the best. So uh, they went over to San Diego last year. We won here against Brawley. Pretty exciting series. And then we went to San Diego, lost uh, right away. First two games, we, were, we lost. And then I guess it kind of itched them a little bit to work harder. And then this year around, um, pretty much the same group of guys. Uh, we found ourselves in 
we needed to beat Brawley two times in a row in order to take that, uh, which is the section or District 22. And they did it. They they beat them at their field, and then they we came back and beat them at our field. Uh, so and that Brawley team is not not easy. And then uh, we we host well Brawley hosted the the which is the sectional section seven where all the San Diego teams that won their district come over to they came over to uh, Brawley and played us, which of course they didn't like because of the weather, right? But but you know what? These guys ended up in the championship against Sweetwater, and they just we just faced a better team, of a, you know, a better team. And um, but these guys, most of these guys, I mean, as you see, there's 11 of them, I think. Uh, Ten of them are currently playing together as a team right now, as a travel team right now. And we just came back yesterday from a three-day tournament in San Diego for for Labor Day. So we left. We pretty much played five games in in three in three days. And they learned another experience where it's not easy to to um, play back-to-back -back days, double headers, and all that stuff. It's it's very demanding. So, all right. Um, I'm going to present the the players. Uh, first one is Adriana Cunha. I see these kids every day, so I don't have to shake their hand too much. So. <laughs> he wants to be a city councilman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> shake hands. Just shake everybody. Shake everybody. <laughs> All right, next player is Donovan Garcia. <laughs> Eric Rojo. <laughs> and one of our players that got injured in one of our previous tournaments, and he's itchy to get back on the field, I know that. Uh, Gilbert Salgado. Double clap for him. Yeah. George Villanueva. Jared Garcia, Rodriguez, I'm sorry. Te cambié el nombre. Daniel Perez Chica. Mario Garcia. Derek Silva. Luis Gracia. And then our assistant coach, like I said, with these guys, we can't make it happen. Can, can someone put down the air conditioning a little more, please? Yeah, we're, we're missing one of them. Uh, Eric. Torres. And like I said, with my coaches, we, I mean, it's, it's busy. I mean, now I understand kind of the elementary teachers and, and all the rest of the teachers that, you know, even though they're they're 10, 11, 10, 11, 12, I mean, it's still hard to handle because they're growing, their attitudes, character, all that stuff comes into play. So 
and it's tough. Uh, George Villanueva. And uh, Luis Gracia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Moreno, for, uh, for giving us a hand and everything, uh, narrating in our games, uh, presenting these guys on the field. I mean, you're, you're good at it. <laughs> so well, keep thank going. you. I appreciate that. And go Bulldogs. Close up here and, and take a, a shot. Uh, Mario Conde from the press. This would be a good story for your chronicle. <laughs> no, this is fine. Come a little closer. I think Bill just went to the restroom. Yeah, he's going to an emergency phone call. Villanueva, you're wanted up here, code three. Coach Villanueva is one of our paramedics for our city, so. Thank you very much, Calixico All Stars. How's your dad? How's your dad? Uh, oh, that's right. Oh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you, eh? Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. And All Stars and family, you are welcome to stay at the meeting, or if you have other things that you have to do. You're more than welcome. I'm sure there's a lot of other entertaining things to do than stay at the meeting, but you're welcome to stay here. Take him to McDonald's. Thank you very much. Good job, boys. Ladies and gentlemen and council members, um, Mr. Hodge had to step out, but we'll continue with the consent calendar. Was general comment from the council? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kim. We'll have at this time a general comment by council members and then eventually our city manager, or you know what, maybe we'll have the city manager speak first. Okay, okay I'll make this real quick, maybe I can set a tone here. Uh, just uh, as you all know, we've had some very interesting weather recently. So I just want to report out that uh, the recent winds and, and rain events that have occurred recently and stretched the emergency, has stretched our emergency services fairly thin. There, are, there were multiple occasions where calls were service were pending due to multiple calls being received for service simultaneously. But the majority of the calls were for uh, arching uh, uh, pole lines with the winds, flooded streets, and traffic accidents. I also want to report out that we also did submit an application to the IID regarding uh, our request for two dispatchers for a total of $300,000 for a funding period of two years. And in our application, we put on there that we would hire them permanently, and if we get funded, we should know by January 1 of the coming year. The last item I'd like to uh, address is uh, just to advise you that the, uh, there will be a housing element workshop to discuss the draft uh, housing element. The workshop is set up for September 5th at 3 p.m. So if you can make it, we'd certainly like to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. And Mr. Bill Hodge, our mayor, is back, so I will let him continue. I'm sorry, I had an emergency. 
what did we... Uh... We're just getting to the general comments, and now we've heard the general comments from the city manager, and now it's uh, the council general comments. Oh, that's right. Okay. Please proceed then. Uh, we can... And remember, we have now put on future agenda items, so please keep them separate. Uh, would we like... We'd like to start to the left. Councilman Castro. Well, yes. Um, um, last, um, I believe... Friday or Thursday? When was that uh, town hall meeting? Yes. I believe, yes, was uh, Thursday. Yeah, the last so. Thursday we had a very interesting uh, town hall meeting at the Kennedy School, the Kennedy Elementary School. And uh, we received um, a lot of input, a lot of um, um, uh, situations related to, to the city, like um, the sweepers, um, the, the steel, and the, the people concerned about some likes related related to uh, Kennedy Gardens, and and also there are some issues um, with um, green areas. Um, basically, the the people from Kennedy Garden are very very clean. Uh, I'm I'm surprised that uh, that uh, colony is very clean. Either. Um, we 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 are working without the, all the personnel in the city. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm very surprised about that. But uh, the people, the people, is still concerning uh, about the issue that I mentioned. And uh, basically, that's that's all I have to report on, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Castro. Councilwoman Hurtado, any comments? General comments. I'd just like to report that uh, now that we have about 45 more days to go for our new um, outlet center to come into the city of Calexico, it looks like the developers are putting together a job fair for the 21st of September. And it looks like they're trying to put that together to be held at the high school gym. That's correct. I just got some of that information today. The details of what time and stuff, I'm not too sure, but I think that it would be very important that the city... Um, uh, distribute that type of information and promote that type of information so that the public is aware of the specifics as far as where that job fair is going to be. I know that I've received quite a number of inquiries directly and I've been referring that to them to the um, to the website that Grand Plaza Outlets has. But apparently this job fair is something that uh, a lot of people will appreciate and most likely we will be expecting a, a really high number of, of applicants so it was a good idea to have put that uh, event, schedule it at our gym. Um, the other is that our farmers markets, uh, thanks to Sandra and Mr. Servine and other uh, key members of the community that are helping out with the farmers market, uh, first time ever, will be October the 6th and we will be having that at the Crummit Park. At this point we do have quite a bit of activities uh, in, in the different needs that a farmer market is going to need. And I know that they're also promoting quite a bit. So it looks like this, the city of Calexico is very excited about having its first farmer's market. Well, uh, Councilwoman Hurtado and everybody else involved, I want to commend you <coughs> on that. I think that's an excellent idea, and I'm looking forward to that farmer's market. And I hope it can become a, a staple in our city. Well, uh, we, have, we have three planned. The first one is October the 6th. So, no, I'm sorry, three this year, once, one time each excellent. month. Oh, in the next six months, That's once an a month. That's excellent idea. Mm -hmm. So it looks like uh, it's going to be really exciting and a lot of fun. Yeah. So. Okay. And we need sponsors. All right. You hear that, folks? We need more sponsors. Sponsors and volunteers. Okay. Thank you. Uh, regarding the town hall meeting, very pleased uh, to have led that uh, with, all, with city staff and the... The residents there, they had very many concerns, as, as Councilman Castro pointed out. And I think it's a very good idea, and I, and I like the idea of having them. Uh, the, the one point that was made, and, and absolutely agree with it, is there's no point in having these meetings unless we actually follow up and do something about it. So, and we have. And so we'll continue to do that and uh, find a way to, to get out, maybe at the next meeting, the areas that we were able to attend to and, and accomplish that. Uh, no, we can't accomplish all of them, uh, but we certainly try to do uh, as many as we can. Um, now there was another item. 
What else? Someone else spoke. There was three items. Um, yes, also. I feel like. Um, what's I forgot his to name? mention about the speeding. On um, what now? Uh, about the speeding no. uh, okay. uh, bump. Oh. There, there, there is uh, some problems on. Yeah. Um, some. There is a person was mentioned. There is kind of uh, concern related to to a speed on on uh, Espinosa Avenue. Okay. And also, uh, Shifa Police, he, oh, we, we give the direction and he, he give us some information related to those uh, speed bumps. Right. It has to be a process. We, we need to follow the process. That's right. There is some problem in yes. order to just to put those uh, speed bumps. So, basically, yeah. he's going to help us. In that. Oh, okay. I know what it was. Uh, Councilman brought it up. The job fair. Um, I was contacted and met with, I believe his name is Camilo Garcia, head of One Stop, and we've sent the concern to city manager and they're working on it and there's going to be a meeting with some of the important stakeholders to come together and uh, w work out all the logistics of the, uh, the job fair that's going to be held September 21st. Okay. Oh, it's just a question. You're saying that the city's going to be involved in the job fair? He requested help from the city, so we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do and listen to listen to uh, because it, this is a huge event. He's concerned about traffic, and uh, if there's any way that we can help him, I'd, I'd certainly would like to do that. So, uh, city manager, you're aware of that, and there'll be a there'll be a date and a time coming. Is that correct, sir? All right, okay, thank I'm a little you. confused, though, Mr. Hodge. Yes. Mr. Hodge, um, you're saying that there's going to be a separate date for a separate um, job fair, or we're talking no, about the same job fair? No, we're talking about the same oh. job fair. I'm just referring to a meeting with the city, the school district, and other people involved, and you're certainly invited to sit down and, and work out a lot of his concerns. And, and he is asking help from the city. Uh, areas that we've done before, you know, like, um, what, what, what do you call to block off traffic, to put those yellow, they're like horses, traffic, things like that. Yeah, we're going to be addressing traffic yeah, we'll be addressing. depending on how many people we're talking yeah. about, where they're going to have it. Right, there's do, a lot of concerns. Emergency response, uh, make sure that we're yeah, aware of that right. kind of stuff. And I, I we won't be doing the job fair. That's no. up to the private no, no. sector. That's right. We're just going to be talking about what, how we can participate right. in making sure that traffic control and so on is in place. Okay, so we're clear about that. That's all I have to say, Council, uh, Councilman. Moreno? Yes, uh, Mayor Hodge. Um, I take ill exception to your comment uh, regarding my use of mockery. Um, I do not mock anyone. If anything, it's a sense of humor. We have a good sense of humor. Well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm, I'm getting at. So okay. um, I will confine myself to the modest limits of order if that's the case. Uh, but if the, uh, if the time or the situation warrants, I will use humor just to break the monotony, and I'm sure that our, our people in attendance wouldn't mind that. But there uh, is no okay. mockery coming All right. from me. I respect your... And I, I all the respect. You. Thank you, sir. And, and I don't want you to lose your sense of humor. Okay. Thank all right? You. All right. But <clears throat> I've studied comedy. There are theories to comedy. <laughs> okay. And there is a difference on mockery, satire, and other types of humor. Right. So... Yes, I will, I will uh, watch but, myself. But I don't want you to ever lose your sense of humor. I won't. Thank you, All sir. Right. Uh, Council, like, oh, anything else you want to say? I want to finish. I just want to say that uh, it was, it, I attended the Back to Business Mixer by the Chamber of Commerce, oh, which was also good. I saw you there, which was also good networking um, as we are all back to business. And hopefully the summer is over and people are, you know, working and, and getting things done. Uh, also, we'll be meeting with the Pioneers Memorial Hospital to see uh, about uh, them working closely with our community. Uh, that'll be coming up next week. If anybody's interested, let me know. I'm um, working closely with uh, Jennifer. That's the date, sir. Uh, September 9th, I believe. I, I got it on my calendar. I think it's next week. For the Pioneer meeting. For the Pioneer meeting, and next Tuesday, I'm not sure. I think they're meeting at the Yum Yum Chinese Food. Um, and also working closely with um, Bobby Brock and the Community Foundation, which is also going to meet with them individually. Um, so we're working on the side to help the community in, in certain areas, in, in healthcare and in, in other ways. 
And I'd like to congratulate the uh, Calexico Bulldogs on their victory Friday night against the desert, against the Hopeville Vikings. Uh, I saw Mr. Kim out there uh, shaking hands in the stands, and it was good to see our council people out there supporting our, our football team. So hopefully we're looking for a great season, uh, the season that brings wins, brings pride, and people are raised, you know, keep their heads up a little higher in Calexico. We got bragging rights, so. Councilman Moreno, how, how did the team look? You gave the play-by-play, -play. how they look? They were coming off an eight and 10 season, they look good. Uh, Aldo, uh, Alberto Valdez, two runs from scrimmage at 75 yards on the average, so we weren't passing that much, but we were running the ball. Anyway, that's all I gotta say, next. All right, very good. Don't get me started. I know. Councilman Kim, any general comments, please? Okay. Looks like my, uh, Mr. Hartley's comment is I'm always negative. I agree with it. I, I've, been, I've been so much negative because I've seen others negative. Because we, that's who we are. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, we cannot cover the sun by the hands. Sooner or later, they're going to come out. Again, the whatever we have right now, because we did it we didn't wrong for the past. That's why we are struggling. We have a lot there in our city. You like it or not, I'll do my portion to for the community. If they positive comes, I'm the one who's going to say positive. This, this is the one who's going. That we're mentioning was Mr. Moreno was mentioning about the college school uh, football team. Three years ago, college school football team, zero win. We lost all the game. Why? Because they didn't have enough support from the community. So the, I and the coach and several parents together, we put the boosters. We support them. We feed them. Guess what? A year later, they won eight games out of the ten games. There's a lot of children's their efforts regardless of what condition they have. That is really positive. The, our kids pr proving to us what they can do. I believe we are the city and others, we're supposed to find a way to help them to better and they can improve them by themselves for the, their future. Very good comment, Councilman Kim. And uh, one thing is town hall meeting. I've been called to not to come. Town hall meeting is supposed to be for the five council members, regardless they're coming in or not. They might, get, they might gonna play by the quorum. The quorum doesn't exist because there is no decision making. Even the regular, regular meeting, there's no quorum. We still can discuss, only we cannot make the decision. Same things, they have to be, they have to be announced. Besides that, they never, Ask me the what day I can come. They just set the, set the date, just one day before the meeting, they said, they called me, can you come? And we have to, the, we, the city has to be used a different way to, instead of ordering the council member to come or not, they have to, they have to start in first to ability of the council member, they can, which they is majority can come. If they really care about the, uh, participating. And also, I'm laughing at the town hall meeting. They're talking. We've been talking, 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 talking. Nothing done. Not true. That's, that's the town hall meeting is. Even, even the irony, town hall meeting, the people complaining about the only one sweepers in the street. There's one only sweepers were walking on the street. They were complaining. Guess what? Our uh, the budget, we're going to approve it by Thursday. We had the two sweeper, we cut the one sweeper. We're going to have only one sweeper. They, that's showing what city wants to do regardless of what, com uh, what community needed. So town hall meeting is works, working. I hopefully, I hopefully mean it, our council member to do something to achieve the goal. It's meeting is we need it. But more than meeting, we need action. Don't talk and talk and talk. We don't need a nice talk. We don't have to convince the community. We have to show them what we're doing. We have to show them our action. 
Look at the parking street. Horrible. Last time, last meeting, I was requested repair schedule for the park and street. Oh, our staff no time. They didn't bring the uh, agenda this time. Over so three I don't know minutes, So, please, let's work together for the community. Don't get busy to give the money for the developers. Please. All right. Thank you, Councilman Kim. I do uh, differ with you when we have proof on paper. We have had some accomplishments, is that correct? So it's not just talk and talk, because that was my concern too. Uh, the town hall meeting uh, can improve, but it's a good thing, and it has been effective, it, and we're moving along. About the issue about not everybody being there, I don't know if I want to get into all that right now, but please speak to city manager, because I thought the same thing as you, but there's some kind of glitch. So maybe, Councilman Kim, you can confer with city manager and he'll explain it to you. Uh, but it was not done on any personal basis, sir. Uh, but, but I don't want to take the time to explain all that right now. I don't think the audience is interested in that. Why, why all of us can't be there. When we, when we come to a definite reasoning, we'll, we'll provide that information to you. We'll, we'll get that out. All right, finally now, uh, city manager. Or has he had his turn already? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right. By the uh, way, I have a question on the city manager. Last meeting, I was requested. The, uh, I was requested the uh, city rep manager report, including the the report of the mega park expenses and the projects what's going on. Right now, so the mega park doesn't pay the the they pay the delinquency of the, their property tax. They've been they've been I believe the foreclosure. Uh -huh. What is going on? We're spending money for them. I'd like to know what's going on we have. And the city and the city and the half, half number, they give the half a million dollars. That, that's a good point. That's a good future agenda. Hold on to that. We'll get but to that. But not bring it. Okay. But, sir, hold on to that. You're mixing things up. This is general comments. Okay. Now, we come to consent item. Usually, it's a simple deal. Nothing controversial. Just workable, operational. So, let's, uh, is there a motion to approve all the items on consent agenda? I have a three, so four, five, six, seven pull out. Thank you. What? Three, four, five, six, seven pull out. Three, four, five, and six, sir? Six, seven. Six and seven. Hell, that's almost all of them. Very good. Yes, because that's, uh, first of okay. all, they're supposed to not be in the consent agenda contract. Okay, here we go. Kim, once again, these are usually very simple items, but. I don't know what you deeply find into them, but you're allowed to speak. Mm -hmm. So the first up, we have to we have to uh, approve. So motion, let motion. let a motion to approve number one, one and number two, two and, and seven, it. and that's it. Just one and two, right? Out of seven, on Out consent seven. agenda. All right. Okay. Uh, there's a motion to approve one and two on the consent agenda. Uh, is there a second? Second. Please vote. All right, Mr. Kim, you may not like this, but I am going to hold you to three minutes. That's a lot that you're pulling. Okay, so go ahead, sir. I, 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 I assume you've had some discussions with city manager on these items. So make your, make, make your inquiries or your points, sir. Number three. <sighs> Number three. How much money we have been paid for the call sale? I don't the, understand that question. Okay, that's a question directed to who, sir? Reimbursed. No, to the city, city manager. manager. Yes. Please respond. How much money have we paid for Corsair? Um, the last time I recall when we got the, I don't remember how, how big the check was, but um, they were behind, I want to say about 30000 uh, they had cleared everything up to 30000 I don't know as of today uh, how much more that is. It can't be that much more because the council has not taken a policy position that we are going to get deposits before we uh, go into any more uh, agreements for anybody. So that's why you have these on tonight. We had more than $300,000 last year report, and then now you said they only 30000 If you recall the last time that we had an agreement on this, there was a check that was delivered, and uh, there was a balance of about, 
I want to say about $30,000 because the remainder of that money, remember, is going to be paid to the CFD with the impact fees and engineering fees. No, wait a minute. Does that mean we're not collecting the fees? Call for the question, Mr. Mayor. We are on the item here in question, which is another completely yes, separate agreement. Yes, because that's a, that's a, that's completely a separate wait. agreement, Mr. We're Mayor. We're talking okay. about the money issues. We're talking about the money issues of how much money is in the issue. Councilman Kim, here's the problem with us. We need to address what's here. And Councilman Kim, did you not have time to, to confer and discuss this with the city manager, sir? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't bring this one because I don't want them okay. hiding. All right. I uh, want them to let, let talk me read. Let me read what the item is, please. Authorize city manager to sign an agreement between the city of Calexico and Corsair LLC for the reimbursement deposit of consulting services and expenses. So please focus on that and continue. But we're going to hold you to almost three minutes each, sir. Mr. You have a lot of items. Mr. Yes, Mayor, Councilman. Item six of the policies and procedures that we discussed at the last meeting, which I emphasized about question and briefings of the agenda with the appropriate staff. Yes, I did. And I, I'm not sure whether or not the appropriate staff has been briefed on the questions that you're going to ask them and if they're not, then I think that's the practice that you should do instead of coming out of left field and hitting whatever you hit in the dark. Well, I, I feel I it's, uh, let me finish. Okay. I feel it's only fair, Don't Mr. Don't need to Mayor. raise your voice, sir. Go I feel ahead. it's only fair, Mr. Mayor, that our staff be given an ample time to study the questions that Mr. Kim is going to ask him. I so agree. So they have the appropriate answers and the answers that this public deserves. I agree, Councilman yes. Moreno. Yes, and not just call for the anyway. question, Mr. Mayor. We need to stick to the item in general here. All right. Um, okay. Please, Councilman Kim. Uh, we don't want this an inquiry. We don't. We don't want to take the time in the public to hash all this out. This is not the point of a city council meeting. So please, uh, you have one minute on this item. Please continue. Why I get get the, the, the interrupting in the middle of the talking? You, you guys say the what you, rules. Are you, what are you doing? What's that? What kind of rule we have? He's under a minute okay. now. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's seconds. Just stick to the to the okay. business at hand. So we already more than we say give them the seven million the bond. We gonna be reimbursed them. Something wrong here. The business has to come with their own money to make the business. All right, sir, you have stated that many times. That's sort of off of this so item. So I make the motion to not to approve it. Okay, is there a second? All right, that motion dies. Is there a motion to approve number three? So moved. Three? Second. Okay, let's please vote on number three. Okay, once again, sir, you have pulled item number four. Let me state what this item is about. Let's stay on, on task, as I say to students. Authorize city manager to sign agreement between the city of Calexico and RBF Consulting for plan check and constructability review services for Second Street Bridge over the new river. I read that. That seemed to be pretty clear. I hope you were able to confer with city manager or staff. But, sir, you have three minutes to address your concerns. Councilman Kim. I move for approval. We're not going to do that? Oh, you move for approval? Okay, I'll wait a minute. I have a question. Okay, yeah, he had pulled it. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. That's right. Let's not get confused. Who's, pay who's paying on this one? Who what? I'm sorry. Who's paying for this uh, the cost? Uh, the item that you just had before that was an item to uh, have an agreement with Corsair to have them pay. They have agreed to pay. So, so we have to pay first, and then they're going to be reimbursed. No, we will have the deposit on before we pay. So we have to have a deposit fee for the pay. That is correct. Okay. This is Which item are we talking about? Four. Four? Okay. Then you I make the motion to, pay, to approve it. To approve Seconds. it. Thank you, Councilman Kim. Is there a second? second? Very good. Second by Councilwoman Hurtado. Moving forward, please vote. Thank you, Councilman Kim. Moving on to uh, item number five on... On, yes. Okay. Oh. There it is. All right, it's unanimous. Moving on to item number five. Adopt the recommended policies of, how do you pronounce it? Ergonomic. 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 Ergonomic program 
B, reasonable, I had to look that up, that's very interesting. Reasonable accommodation, interactive process policy. Go ahead, uh, you had concerns, you pulled this out, yes. Councilman Kim. This one from the JPIA, what is what understanding? Is that true? This is one of the policies that they've asked for us to look at, correct? Yes, because I believe that all the council members, they received a letter for Please the recommendation me. letter from the JPIA. This is not, a, not a confidential. So we have a lot of issues, they are mentioning a lot of issues, and then they were mentioning the POA. And I'd like to know who went to meeting, JPI meeting on the July this year. Call for the question, Mr. Mayor. He's going off again on the Well, agenda. because of JPI related. This but is sir, on the that, approval of the That's a question adopt. that's not related to the specific item. Yeah, but it's so, a good question, wait, wait but a sir, it's Excuse not related. Excuse me. The, the, what the, this letter is caused by the JPI after they did the study. And the last July, we had the, uh, our representative go to the, the, the La Palma to have a meeting. Last year, Ms. Urtado went it. So who went to this year? Call for the question, Mr. Mayor, has nothing to do so with you, the Ms. approval did you of the, for the approval of the adoption of the program. Nothing I'll to second do with that. that. All right. So when you guys do that, then we just vote? We vote on call for the question. Oh, okay. Let's no, the vote. Call for question for the vote. First. Okay, I got to learn here. Hold on. Let's go slow. So when you call for the question, he seconds it. We're voting. To stop discussion. To stop, to stop this discussion because it's right. off. Let's please, that's been, that we have that right to do that. Let's please vote for the stop discussion. Everybody vote please. Yes would mean we want to stop discussion. Councilman Castro. All right, Kim, your vote, sir. All right, three, two, so. It's not passed. So we do not discuss now, is no, there a motion? No, it's not passed, we have to be two thirds. Is that correct? Yes. No. City Attorney. Do we have a third? City Attorney with many years of experience. Just a majority vote to call for the question. Okay. No, I'm it's about the brown, no, about the right. Robertson rules at two, two, two thirds. I move to approve this item. All right, is there a second? Please vote. City Attorney said it, it only took a majority vote. I make the motion to not to approve it. Too late. We've already made the motion, Councilman Kim. All right. This item passes. A majority vote based on city council. Let's please move on to item number seven. No, number six, no? Six. Wait. You pulled six also? Did you? Yeah, he pulled, he pulled three six. to seven. No, I, uh, I pulled all of them. Three, four, five, five six, three, six, seven. Three through seven. Did we not just, we just did... We just did six, didn't mm. we? Or yes. Five? No, we did, uh, we did only... The oh, that was five. Now we're moving five. to six. Sorry. The request in action specifically authorized city manager to sign an agreement for reimbursement of environmental consulting services expenses between the city of Calexico and Corsair LLC. Uh, you pulled that also, Councilman Kim. Uh, you have three minutes to address your issues or questions, sir. Well, actually, same reason. Same reason we should not pay the money okay. until we receive the money from them. As long as they pay first, if we pay, uh, then we pay them, pay the company, it's okay. All right. We should not spend our cash more for the developers. That's my main okay. purpose. All right, sir. Is there so a So what, uh, what is this condition right now? I'm Do they going to pay first? Yes, sir. Okay. The documentation says so. Okay. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Please vote on item number six. Okay. Sorry. All right. The item, uh, the motion is approved. Four to one. Moving to item number seven. That's still in the consent. Is that correct? Here we go. Did you pull this one also, Councilman? Yes. King? Okay. The last one. Uh, last one. Let, let well, me read it. Author yeah. okay. Authorize city manager to sign amendment number one to agreement for professional services between the city of Calexico and Nicholas Engineering Incorporated for the environmental assessment for the relocation of Anza Road and the release slash acquisition of land adjoining the Calexico International Airport. We have backup. I've read it. I assume all the city council people have read it. Please address your concerns. Uh, please try to keep it within three minutes, Councilman Kim. Well, 
actually this one is related with the number six. And if you guys approve the number six, almost we, uh, we have to approve this company. Mm -hmm. So again, I don't have nothing to against this company as long as we, we follow the right steps. Did we follow the right steps to bidding process on this company? This is a professional agreement, so they can hire whoever they want. Oh, they? The, the they're hiring. Yes, they're paying for it. They pay for it. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Then why do we have to approve it? Well, we, we want to approve it because this company is a company that we feel comfortable with also. So before we go into an agreement with them, the prior item, if you recall, says that they'll provide the deposit. So they've been conferring with us through the project to make sure that they don't get some company from out in left field. So they've been talking to us to make sure that we also feel comfortable with it. Motion to approve, Mayor. All right, very good. Second. And second. Motion made by Councilman Moreno, second by Councilman Mejertado. Please vote. Once again, the motion carries 4-1. Now we move to item number eight. That, ladies and gentlemen, is in the business, right, section. Let me just check, items. So here we go. Item number eight. It is recommended that the city council discuss and consider a potential water rate discount for senior citizens in the city of Calexico and provide staff with further direction. Now, city attorney, what's the proper protocol? I have uh, someone that wants to uh, comment on that from the audience. Do they have the right to do so first? Or should the council people speak, uh, speak about it first? I'm just asking what's the proper. Well, if you would like, if there's any questions of staff or if you want staff to give a presentation, then let the members of the public speak and then the council members can ask questions. All right, let comments. me learn. It, when we have an item like this, and it does require some explanation, best for staff, for to, staff to explain, first. then have the public, yes. and then, okay, very good. So uh, I would assume that that city manager, Oscar Rodriguez, please proceed, sir. Honorable Mayor and Council Member, this item comes to you as a request by <laughs> Council Members Kim and Castro. And the item that we have before you, uh, unfortunately, has to ask certain questions uh, before we can get to a decision. And one of the things that we need to ask is if, in fact, you want to provide the 50% uh, discount, then there's certain requirements that we have to go through. And there's such a, an item called Proposition 218, which a lot of us have heard about. It's in the California Constitution Article uh, 13C through D, which requires that any fees imposed for providing a property-related service, which includes water, includes wastewater, and includes airport, may not exceed the cost of providing the services because they are considered enterprise uh, funds, and therefore they are supposed to uh, survive on their own. So that if we choose to look at uh, lowering the rates for any class uh, within this particular enterprise uh, uh, fund or enterprise uh, uh, entity, then there are two ways to do it. You can do it through a voter approval, uh, which uh, 218 requires, or option two is to find non-enterprise zone funding to provide for that particular adjustment or discount. In this particular case, you would probably be looking something in the general fund, such as investment income or so, to offset whatever the discount or adjustment would be to any particular uh, class of, of, of individuals or customers within that particular account, just like it could be senior citizens, it could be a single, a single uh, family um, uh, item, uh, you have a, one parent uh, family, it could yes. be disabled, it could be, you name it, it could be another class. So it goes for any class that you may set aside. If you so desire to do something like that, as I said, we have to find revenue somewhere else to offset that particular adjustment. And I will tell you that it will be very difficult to find revenue in the general fund since uh, the, the budget that we put together shows a very, very uh, uh, slim uh, surplus. We do have a surplus, but if I remember correctly, it's like $44,000. Uh, 
Um, and then if you so desire to move that route, then we're also going to have to answer a lot of other questions in reference to what is a senior? Uh, what is the age of a senior? AARP says you're 50 years old, so probably a lot of us in this room are seniors at this point, according to AARP. We don't want to admit it, but we are. Uh, so it's a question of is it 50? Is it 55? Is it 60? Uh, and so those questions will have to be answered. The other questions that will probably have to be answered is it based on the person on the bill? Uh, it could be where, um, uh, if my mom wants to live with me, she's a senior citizen, uh, maybe the action would be, if you're on the bill, you get the discount, and so therefore, I don't get the discount. Uh, on the other hand, once I know that that's the case, then I would put my mom on the bill, then she could get the discount. So there's some mechanisms that we need to be careful about if we're going to be going down this particular route. Another question that we uh, would like to put on, uh, on notice it would be, uh, who, uh, is, would this be for all seniors? Uh, obviously, there are some seniors that are better off than other seniors. Uh, so would we be talking about low-income seniors? Because that's probably who we want to address. I don't know. So that's another question question that we would have to put on the table and try to answer and define and how would we define it based on state standards, based on federal standards, based on what? We would have to be able to define that. As we do a lot of these uh, and answer a lot of these questions, it begs the question that we are also changing the rate structure. And so that also can lead into some other issues in reference to another class of people wanting to know why only this class is getting a discount and why not another class is getting a you discount. You know what, I'm already depressed. So, so there's a lot of questions that go into something like this. When we set the rate schedule, we have a, a rate uh, review, uh, which we are coming up to do, a rate review. And then that reviews all of the different uh, classes and the rate structures and takes a look to make sure that what we are billing is what our cost are. So I realize I've thrown a lot of questions at you, but it's a very complicated issue. It's not as simple as to just simply say, we're going to cut it in, in half and, and move on. So well, again, I, I'm sorry to tell you that there's more questions than we have answers for you at this time because we need to answer those. So, so let me understand what you're implying here. And, and I, I do commend Councilman Kim and Castro for putting this. I would love to see some kind of discount, but wow, this is complicated. Um, if, if, if sometime tonight we do say we want to proceed, you say there's no way we can make a decision now. There's going to take some time for a lot of uh, research. Is that correct? Well, we'd have to, do, again, define what is a senior. A lot of definitions. So there has to be okay. some backup as to how uh, we're defining that. All right. And then we have to identify what revenue source would be used to okay. offset the adjustment. All right. I, I understand what you're saying. So now let me, let me go. Let's go to the, the proper steps here. It was said that it would be nice that we ask somebody from, from the audience, and we have, I don't see, it. there is no name. Yeah, somebody put a slip without a name. Well, there's a, who, who was interested in, oh, in, yeah. in the water rate discount? Unfortunately, you didn't put the name. All right, please come forward and state your name. I only have one at this time, but. I thought I'd put my name That's on there. That's quite all right. Olivia Valenzuela, 707 Rockwood Avenue, long, lifelong resident of Colexico and proud Bulldog, and also proud senior citizen. Uh, and let's, let me make something clear. I am not here representing any group of residents. I'm here on my own, of my own accord. When, while the discount sounds lovely, I would much rather invest some more money on staff because I have been the victim of that, that infernal telephone where nobody ever answers and finally the machine comes on and tells you, you know, all the information, leave a message, etc. Then when you're getting ready to leave your message, another uh, message comes on, sorry, voicemail is, is full. Please try again. Tried and tried and tried. I have, I've had my service cut off three times in the last six months, nine months. Six months ago was an error. And just last week, two weeks ago, I was on vacation. I just came back on Saturday. My children who reside in San Diego tried for two weeks to get through to the city water department to pay my bill and they never got through. So why, instead of investing in a discount, 
why not make the residents happier? There are people out there who are homebound, who, can, who like I was for the last nine months, I could not leave my bed. Uh, so there was no way I could run to City Hall in the middle of the day to pay my bill before it got cut off, as, as some of you are aware. And it would be so, so, so much more helpful. And I see I only have three seconds. I, one minute, one minute. Darn, thank you. Um, I, I don't mind the discount. I would love it. But I prefer to have better service at this time. Uh, think of the seniors who are, who are homebound, who are ill, who cannot get around because they don't have a ride, and cannot get through that, that telephone. I would recommend that staff, Mr. Rodriguez, please assign somebody at the end of the day to go through that mail, that, that, that telephone, to answer the calls, because nobody ever gets back to us. And I am speaking from personal experience, not from anybody else's experience. Been through it, been there, done the walk, walk the walk. And, and so I thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Um, at this point, that's the only person that we had to no, no, I, I, speak I, I, on this item. So now we'll, oh, I'm sorry, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. State your name, address? Yeah. Marlene Thomas, 653 uh, mm -hmm. Olive, uh, El Central. Uh, I, I would like—I didn't know this was on agenda, but I'm just—I was listening to it, and I think what Olivia or Miss Manuelas just spoke about is something that we absolutely need. But I don't—I think it can all work together, Miss Valenzuela. That what we're looking at is efficiency, and we need to uh, find out what is the problem that uh, people are, are not being uh, the calls are not being followed up to. So I think that's a staff problem that can be rectified, and and secondly. Um, I love the idea of, of a rate to seniors. Actually, I would wish the state would give all senior homeowners, um, it, give them a waiver from paying tax. But I, I think this is very good. I, I think uh, there's a lot of models out there to uh, easily come to um, determining the um, age limit from AARP to even IID locally. They have a, a low interest rate for, for electricity. So I think there are a lot of good models and it's just finding the money and finding a mechanism. But I, I think it's something that can work. Further discussion on it and, and follow up. Thank you. We now go to the council. Um, we can start with you. Councilman Castro, since you were one of the co-authors of this item. Well, um, the, the way I see it, like um, um, Mr. Uh, Three minutes. City Manager, he's mentioned that uh, there, there, there is so many uh, concerns related to, the, to that issue. And uh, one, of the, one of the issues that I'm reading here, in order to uh, make it happen, I believe that's the big issue. Um, we need to uh, to uh, to work with the voters because they, there is a, a proposition that the that the taxpayers need need to um, to know. So one uh, again, one of the main issues is to uh, work on the next uh, uh, election in order to the to the uh, citizen decide. In order to the citizen decide for uh, the deduction for for the okay. for the seniors, but yes, like uh, again, like uh, um, city manager mentioned, we need to either um, um, I don't know what I believe uh, city ma manager and uh, city attorney need to work on those issues and then give us the the update on that. That's my So concern. if I understand you, work on that. Yes. But if it seems so complicated, we can always take it to a vote to the community. Is that correct? After, after all. After all. That's, that's first, we need to... We, we at need least to, find out. We, we need to um, um, uh, get all the issues together. Yeah. Uh, like um, City Marion mentioned. Okay. Um, we, uh, I believe... For me, a senior is 55 and up. Yeah, unfortunately. To, or either 
62 years old, but yeah. no, I think we need to start I'm, I'm with personally having trouble putting my socks and, uh, on, but that's another the, issue. Oh, that's, that's one of them, but okay. there are so many issues uh, we need to All right. um, establish <laughs> with, the, with the city attorney and uh, city manager. All right, thank that's you, Councilman Castro. Uh, Councilman Kim, would you mind if we deferred to Go Councilwoman ahead. Hurtado and, and we can hear from her? Councilwoman Hurtado? Yeah, I think that the, the in discussions with staff and review of this item and other items in the usual review, one concern was the amount, the guesstimated amount that looks like we're almost close to maybe I think a million that it would cost to make this decision. I think that that probably would be the primary um, issue to, to really close look at is what would be that cost. And as the speaker just mentioned, if you take a million dollars and give that out as a discount, to this one, if that's even going to be legal to select out this one group only, uh, where is that million dollars going to come from? Who's going to suffer on the other end? That's something we definitely need to take into consideration. Just like anything that's out there as far as expenses is, and this can be considered an expense, is where what other end of our financial picture will suffer from a decision like this? Thank you, Councilwoman Hurtado, for your comments. Uh, Councilman... Moreno, please. Go with Kim. You want to go with Kim? Okay. Councilman Kim? Okay. I believe I didn't see the million dollars we're going to be impacting to this count of seniors. It was in discussions. Okay. okay. Oh, please time. Okay. And the other one is the actually uh, almost cost nothing for the city. We have 3,000 cubic feet. Uh, cubic feet, isn't it? Yeah, 3,000 cubic feet, we have a uh, basic. But senior, uh, senior couple, they're leaving, they, not, they do not use much water as much as uh, the regular family. So we might can go down to the basic for the discount account to the 2,000 cubic feet, which is two-thirds of the normal basic. And we give them 50% discount. So that means we're only giving the the 500 cubic feet more than the uh, usual from the half discount. That is almost nothing. And also, the age, I believe, I was saying the 55 probably, but maybe 60 more reasonable. The 55 too young, maybe 60 reasonable. And the uh, low income people, uh, we're gonna be have some these people who really need help to can help. And the other one is, the, they were saying sometimes people having the, the living together with the, their grandma or grandpa, and they want to change the name of the them. I believe I'm applauding a lot of family they living with the, their elder. I'm applauding them. They keep taking care of their parents. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy to see that. And well, I don't mind to give them the discount, but they, they, they better think twice because a lot of families together, they're going to go to uh, a basic 2,000 cubic feet. So if they're using the more than 2,000, they still have to pay over usage. usage. So I think so that the money we can go for the uh, water bill, probably $1 donation. So any, any people, they want to donate it from the water bill for the Ghost Senior Program? We can collect it from the donations. So actually, I believe we, we might not going to be able to, we're not going to spend much money on that, the subsidizing. Okay. But we need to find a way to help the, our low-income uh, seniors. All right. Thank you, Councilman Kim. Uh, I, do, I do respect your concerns. I, I, I care, uh, we all care about City, city um, senior senior citizens. Uh, Councilman Moreno has a question. Yes, um, I think this is a great concept and an idea, um, helping out uh, senior citizens. But I would like to, you know some some questions that may come around that I thought about is maybe the city showing favoritism to a group of people if it's the seniors why not the disabled or why not the unemployed sure um, so it may be opening up something that will continue to deplete 
uh, funds. It looks like, you know, staff time to research this object, to lower the revenue for the city, to me, in a sense, doesn't really make sense. Um, I'd also like to perhaps to find out what the ratepayers have to say. If there's a way that we could put a little questionnaire, maybe one or two questions on the water bills. I know we have ideas or announcements that go on the water bills, maybe a couple of questions when they submit their water payment, maybe they can answer a question, are you in favor of this? Do you think this is a good idea, et cetera? That way we get an overall idea about this item from everyone and not just from a few. Um, I know Tomas Oliva had given us earlier this year all these statistics as to the, uh, the number of seniors in the community, the number of uh, uh, teenagers, et cetera. Maybe we should look at that and see what percentage of the population of the 40,000 residents plus that Calexico has are seniors and what percentage of those seniors were the ones that may need assistance. Are there programs that can provide assistance through the IID for water rate discounts? I don't know. There's all kinds of questions that, that I think come to mind for this. Of course. Um, so maybe we should start off by asking the rate payers, do you think this is a good idea or not, by putting it on the, uh, on the water bill? Maybe start there before we start spending all this money for research that our staff is going to be doing to, 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 to lower the revenues that come into this community. And Ms. Valenzuela, you are absolutely right. Service has to improve. Maybe we should ask a question on the water bill if, 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 if they're satisfied with their service on a scale of one to five. Before we, be, and I know what you would answer, <laughs> but before we embark on such a, to me sounds like a, a costly thing, to go to the voters, which is, which is you know, a special election, but correct me if I'm wrong, 20, 30, 40,000, something like that, you know. I, I think we should get a feeling from the community by asking them first to see what their, what their ideas is. Maybe they have other questions. Maybe we can have another town hall just to discuss this meeting. Good point. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilman Moreno, many of the uh, arguments you made, I totally agree with you. I think it should be put out there to the public. Uh, I, I certainly... I think it's a great concept also. I would not want to see this die right now. I, I would like to follow up on this uh, city manager uh, to see what the possibilities are, but I also am concerned, like uh, Councilwoman Hurtado had stated, about the cost to the city. But senior citizens are a special group, but again, it might lead to incorporating other groups, but then as far as I understand the statistics here, we're a very low social economic uh, community. So that would probably just about mean everybody if we were including uh, the people that are, that are low in income or handicap. Uh, God bless this community. We, we do, you know, we still stand up strong, even though a whole lot of us don't make a whole lot of money. But uh, I don't want to see this die, so I say I concur with council Men Moreno to put it out there to the public and uh, maybe first to see if it is an issue that the majority of the uh, people want to entertain. And I was going to wait for future agenda items. Well, you know what? I will, but I want to address the item about the telephone. That's one of my future agenda items. So uh, that's my statement on this item. I don't think, what was this for? What did it say? Discussion or direction? So, council, do we want to give direction to city staff led by city manager to investigate and find out these myriad of areas and concerns? But before we do that, do we want okay. to I'd like take... to make the motion to directions. Okay, go ahead, Second. sir. The find out the 60 years older, the age, is, uh, age groups of 60s, and the 2,000 cubic yards, and low income, as uh, I believe that we have some uh, cat uh, category for the low income, the group for the state. So, and then using that one, and then to f find out how much it's going to be impacting on the city, city water bills, we how much we can subsidize it. So, to get this, uh, we can do our own study to bring the probably the month later or next meeting to bring it to the approval of the fund, uh, from the council again. So which is the elderly, elderly age, uh, age, age limitation is uh, 60 years older, and the 2,000 uh, uh, cubic yard 
Yeah. Could be, could you, are you talking about the volume oh, of water when you say that? What, what is the definition of a senior citizen? That's what I'm saying. Definition of a senior citizen. You can He's arbitrarily making it. Is it 60? Is it 55? Is I go it to 50? Denny's and I'm going to say Well, that's something that, <laughs> yeah, that this Denny's council 50. needs to decide. We need, <laughs> need to be, to yeah. staff, is, staff is requesting I'd that like we, the council, 70, be precise, that we, the council, be precise on who is a senior citizen so and who determined. is, this is the recommendation here is asking for a definition on who will be eligible. That is right now. That yes. is not for them. That is for us. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That that's what I'm saying. I'm making more, uh, but can we, motion, can motion we, to direction and then I've been interrupted. And the, uh, so 60 years, the definition of the, the uh, seniors as a 60 years old. That's older. your definition. That's yours. No, no, that's what I'm trying to make the motion to direct to the... Councilman Kim, I don't think we're going to vote on this. Is this correct, city manager? It's not... Well, it's not if you're giving... Providing direction, yeah, so you're providing your yeah. direction, sir. The 60 years old, okay. and the providing the, and based on the 2,000 cubic feet, the base water, mm -hmm. And uh, low income as a category, and uh, our state uh, state category for the low income. Mm -hmm. So that we can go for that, how much it's going to impact the fee to us to subsidize it. Okay. That we can bring for the council meeting, so we can make the decision how we're going to do it. Okay. Okay. Those are your directions. You've got them yes. down, city manager. Well, first uh, we have to vote on it. Huh? We if all you have get to a second, then I'd like to make some comments. Well, do, do we agree? I mean, I think we all can give our input. It's going to be a long list. Do we agree with uh, Councilman Kim's? Yes, second. Okay, but we're not voting. Still, we can oh, tell just give direction. Okay, right? just direction. Well, I, I agree that we should in, entertain his, his areas, but I think uh, we should all, uh, go ahead. What do you want to add to this? Well, I'd like to get a feeling from the rate payers how they feel about this all right i mean there's okay. there's people out there that are senior citizens that 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 need and that they're not senior citizens that need to say where okay. we're this going you know are we going to up the rate for those that aren't seniors to offset the cost mm -hmm. has that been thought of well that's city attorney if you're going to go to a vote that's what you would be saying do you want to provide a discount to senior citizens your bills other rate payers bills will go up to provide the discount to they citizens. Will go That's up? what yeah. the vote would be. Offset. You would need a vote of the ratepayers like to approve that. Or the other option is, do you want to subsidize this with a general fund? In which case, you don't need a vote of the ratepayers if you want to use general fund or some other fund to subsidize this. Yeah, like interest to be earning from the money of interest money. But, well, it, I would like to know that before, that I, I agree with the, Mr. Moreno, we need to have a bit, uh, some number before we make the decision. That's why I'm trying to give the categories to uh, 60 years older and the 2,000 uh, cu uh, cubic feet. feet. Uh, I have a question on that, Mr. And, Kim. He's mentioning cubic feet of water, uh, Mr. City Engineer. Yeah, what, what, what the heck does that pertain to? <laughs> to Is that water? I flunked math. There's 7.48 uh, gallons per cubic foot of water. Which so you're talking about 26,442 cubic feet for. So every what? month, every month we get billed ninety-nine dollars and ninety-eight cents. True or not true? That's we're the basic of all three and services. If we use more than what we're billed, we get charged more. Is that correct? Right. And if we use less, we still pay the same amount. That's right. If you're yes. below that 3,000 cubic feet. Hey, that's not fair. What, no. what, uh, what Council Member Kim was alluding to, and that is, is, is going to take some work, um, because what he is saying is if you lower the base from 3,000 cubic feet to 2,000 cubic feet, then you have more people paying excess and therefore that excess may cover the adjustment for the people that you are providing for seniors. Oh, I see. The only question that I had, and I'll let the city attorney address, is the issue of whether you can use that excess that, that's going to be uh, coming out of the 2,000 people who pay over 2,000, which some people will pay more, and then can you use that to offset the adjustment? Is it legal? Well, we, we would have to look how it would be set up, but the whole idea of Prop 218 is you're only charged the cost of providing the service. So you cannot be charging one class of ratepayers more to offset charging another group less. So it's even, likely even, that that approach would not work. Even 
Even with what city manager just said about lowering the base, if that's still a point. The city may be able to adjust its water or water rate structure, but we would need, you, you know, you need a consultant who sets a methodology that's justified by applicable law and applicable practices to do something like that. The city's got a rate structure based on a prior study done by a consultant who's trained to do these things. If you, if the city were going to entertain adjusting that, you would need to hire a consultant to figure out if it can be done and if it meets the proper standards that water rates are charged and, and also the legal standards for property. We have to activity. hire a consultant? Yes. Yes, we Mr. would we have to hire somebody to do Mr. Rates. Mayor, I have a question for yes, city, sir, go ahead. city manager. It seems to me that this is a great in concept uh, to, to provide this discount, but I'm sure that the big populace of the committee would not want to see their water rates go up as, as, as that this may happen. Brawley, several years ago, had a utility tax. What was the purpose of that? Do you recall? The utility tax was basically to shore up their general fund. Okay, so this had this would if we were to have a utility tax, which would go to the voters, the seniors, it wouldn't help the seniors. I mean, you could use the money could we? for the seniors if you wanted to. It's so basically okay, a general you have to people tax. Leaving. You, have you to said utility tax, voters. and I'm sure that this community at this time would not want to pay more taxes if that went for the voters. I, I would like to say something. Go ahead. I, I do have a problem with Mr. Kim's proposal because okay. establishing ages and in, in categories, it's just so unfair to, for example, the single parent mothers that are trying to raise six children on their own. They're also in a very difficult financial circumstances. Why are we not discussing their needs as well? And by, by being so selective like that, I mean, I, I think it's a great concept to want to help. However, once you start opening up uh, this type of issue into providing preferences, and I don't understand how that is not understood right now because we do, we're in a low income economy um, city. And so, like you just said now, uh, are we going to be this selective where we're not going to treat the, the struggling parent of six kids, single parent of six kids, because she's not a senior? That person is as needy as well. So as far as moving on into, into so many details and providing direction with saying that we need to specifically request information on certain uh, categories already, I think that's wrong. I think we need to bring this out to the community and allow them to make that decision. In what way, Councilwoman? <coughs> As Mr. Moreno was indicating, to, to throw that question out there and ask and get a feel for what the community says. Not what it says here, because this may be political, the decision of wanting to specifically single out and favor a certain group. We're not here to do that. We're trying to provide a service to everyone involved. Could, could, and we, could we put out the both options to the public? Okay. Uh, we could try different mechanisms, uh, whether it be through our water bills, through our website. Uh, but when you put the question before them, would you, would you like to have an adjustment for senior citizens? I don't think you're going to find anybody who's going to say no. The question is, where is it going to come from? Uh, so when you say, and the money will be offset by the general fund, therefore potentially uh, lowering your service levels in some other area, I don't know that they would want to do that. Because the money's got to come somewhere unless you have a voter approval. Well, before we do all this research, we do need to be transparent. We do need to consider the public. So maybe we just ought to just, is this going to cost a lot of money to put it out there for the public? We can, we can try. We, I mean, obviously, in the water bills, you can only put so much. And so we'll try to figure out how, what kind of wording we can put in there. Because again, do you want it? I, I don't think you're going to find anybody who's going to say no. I mean, I think we all want to be able to do that if we could do it. The question is going to be, are you willing to offset it by pot potentially lowering some of your other services? Because the money potentially has to come from the general option? fund. Wasn't there another option? Go to the voters. Go to the voters and have I them offset it. I know that's costly, but do you feel we should put that out there for them? I know it's costly. Well, again, if you're going to do it in a regular election, it may be less. If you're going to call for a special election, that's, yeah, it's, it's going to cost costly. you about $30,000. Well, at this point, for me, I think Ottawa we just should take the first step of seeing what the public wants. I agree with uh, yeah. Councilman Moreno. Uh, can we check the sort of staff to the look into those? Yes, we can look at it, that, but, but I don't know, you know... Um, 
to bring the issues to the Did you want to say something, Nick Servine? Just like okay. we already have a category to 60, 60 years old, and 2,000 square, uh, um, cubic feet, uh, cubic, yeah, cubic feet, and the low, in, uh, low, uh, low income category for the state. All right, we, so we heard I, that. So Ms. Murtado was say, mentioning about, uh, we were, I was thinking about the, all the low income people, but we got too much. We do. So we, yes, that's why we're starting from the uh, seniors, are, let's see how it works, and then we, we might can, if we function okay, well, Councilman maybe we can Kim, expand it. Let's do that then. Uh, city manager has written down your, your, yes. your request, but at the same time, Maybe the first step should be, do you agree, Councilman Kim, to put it out to the public, or are you saying we should do this simultaneously? This is just like a water bill, to like I, I, some okay. water bill pool. I, have right. a, I have a question, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, please, let's not. Um, it, while we're on the subject, yes, sir. Um, could you provide information on how many delinquent water bills are out oh, there? Oh, boy. Or is that touching a sore subject? Well, your hat's off the it's item. A different item. Councilman. I mean, if we're talking about water bill discounts, shouldn't we talk about water bill Delinquents, delinquency. Oh boy, Councilman. I council. mean, is there it feasible now to consider and pursue this, Mr. Mayor? I ask you. <laughs> I'm already confused. I would just like to take your your lead on putting it out in the public, and and taking the lead on Councilman Kim. Let's leave it like that. This is getting very complicated. Can you I'm just can you just take that and come back with us or email us? I'm sure later? some of our rate pairs will, will keep, have that in mind. Yeah. yeah. So, All right. So are you saying get a feel from the public first yes. before we do anything else? Uh, how, how no, I'm the, I mean yeah, both I together. Okay. I, I make a motion. I'm sorry. I make a motion that uh, we do give direction to our city manager to get a feel from the public as far as this uh, concept. I and I'll second. Have a second there. Okay. I'll, I'll second for discussion, uh, uh, Councilman Woman Hurtado. Um, also, what the hell was it? Um, uh, to um, God, it's just wow. It's a senior moment, ladies and gentlemen. Fifty years old, right, John? No yeah, more. Fifty-two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's why I, I, I like uh, I like the moment of my motion. The Mr. Castro was seconded. I uh, adding the Mr. Moreno's uh, the the. Uh, uh, idea, which is we're gonna oh, yeah. at the same time we're gonna have a feeling from the water, uh, people from the water bill. That was it out in the I, public. I know a few years ago you had a, a survey on the water bills regarding the parks, or as one of the issues, and so kind of a rating scale, something like that. What, that's what I'm agreeing to get. Oh, you mean the form, the way to do right, it, the right, rating yeah. scale. Okay. So we can we can both together to come back to come back to this council. Okay. Yeah. All right. Did did you get this? <laughs> I, again, uh, I, my only you question feed, is, re, are you telling this? me do the survey study first and then come back and then we'll take something else? Are you, because the, the, the survey is probably not a big issue if we can just find a way to very succinctly put it on the water bill. Because, again, the biggest issue is not going to be whether people agree to give seniors a discount. I think if you took a poll right here, everybody would say Absolutely. yes. It's going to be a matter of are they willing to potentially give up some services somewhere because the money has to come from the or general fund. Or pay some more for seniors. That's, seniors. I think, the question that really the, the and, and we pretty much know what the answer is, but let's just put it out there anyway. Okay. And That's then what we want to know. And then once we, do, once we okay. do that, we'll come back to you, and then we'll know whether or not you even want to move right. forward with All this. All right. Did you hear that? Can we please agree with that? Please? Okay. Let's move on. Okay. Please? Is that it? We're good? Well, well, are, my are you awake? Direction. What was the direction? Okay. What city manager just said. <laughs> Senior moment. Yeah. What he just said. I agree. So we're going to do the survey. All right. We're going to do the survey. That's what you agreed. Okay, done with that item. Okay, let's move on to item number nine. Just I just want to make a comment that when we have guests come up here for various items, please give them the utmost respect, and uh, that's all I want to say. So we have a little presentation on this. Okay, I've probably seen this before. Will you please excuse me for one second? Uh, good evening. Uh Mayor and Council Members, uh, Mark Baza, ICTC Executive Director. We are here to present uh, the Orange Line route design concept for your consideration to approve, as well as the bus stops that, that we've identified as part of this analysis. But I wanted to give you a little background. Um, this, uh, this concept of intra-city circulators was uh, initially developed as part of uh, the region's tw uh, 2000, uh, year 2000 transit vision 
and was uh, subsequently uh, documented in our recent uh, short range transit plan that was completed in 2012. Um, following all of that effort, or as part of all of that effort, we did submit to Caltrans a, a grant application for a planning grant uh, to analyze intra-city circulators for both for, for the cities of Calexico, Brawley, and Imperial. And we are here today to talk about your, your proposed orange line. The study uh, was approved by Caltrans. We did develop a scope in partnership with all the city staff that were affected in this study. Uh, we also, uh, the city staff also participated in, in the consultant selection process for the study. Um, so here we are as we develop the study and uh, I'm going to turn it over to our project manager, uh, Mr. Guillermo uh, Calvez or Will, and uh, he will review with you the study efforts as well as the design concept. Thank you very much, Mark. Can everybody hear me? Okay, good. Uh, so this is um, this presentation is to discuss how we got to the design for the proposed Orange Line uh, circulator here in um, in Calexico. Uh oh, hold on. There we go. So uh, Mark just went through some of the introductions. Uh, he mentioned that we recently completed, um, ICTC has recently completed an SRTP, as it's called, a short range transit plan for the, uh, for the IV transit system. And just to give some uh, backstory, the, uh, the transit system, if you're regular users of the IV transit system, you know how it works. It's, it's a multi-centered network. It has services that connect the communities of, you know, Calexico, with, uh, with uh, uh, El Centro, up to Nyland, Brawley, Calipatria, et cetera, all through the county. And then there's also a couple of routes right now in El Centro, the blue and green shuttle routes that, uh, that circulate amongst that community. Um, as part of the regional transit vision back in the year 2000 and continuing as part of the SRTP effort from, uh, from last year, there were circulators, additional circulators, besides the blue and green lines in El Centro, Proposed for Calexico was uh, labeled an orange line, Brawley, a gold line, and Imperial, the red line. And uh, the project basically relied on two primary components. We did uh, a lot of public outreach and data gathering, and then we also had a, uh, a technical transit planning effort, which is still underway and will wrap up uh, shortly. So um, we did a rider survey in February. If some of you are regular riders of the IV transit system, you may have been aboard the buses that day when the rider surveys were handed out. It was a, uh, a bilingual questionnaire. Uh, they were onboard uh, interviews which were self-administered. And they asked questions about uh, origin and destination, trip purpose, uh, frequency, you know, how often the uh, passengers traveled, um, and, other, and other items. Uh, we then did stakeholder interviews in March, which here in Calexico, several city council members also attended. And um, in April, we did uh, two different events. We did uh, bilingual bus stop workshops. And here in Calexico, we were at uh, Third and Pauline at the, uh, at the, uh, at the bus terminal. And uh, uh, public workshops as well at the library, where we, we gathered information and input from various members of the public as well as other stakeholders. So the idea here was, you know, sort of the, a, a version of the Hippocratic Oath that doctors take. You know, first, do no harm. You know, we know that the, uh, the existing riders are out there. We, the, the, the circulator services are seen as an additional service that is being proposed to meet many of the needs of the community and not as something that is done in place of something else. Um, we wanted to build consensus through the outreach and, and, and planning process. And uh, we work closely with, you know, with uh, various members of, the, uh, of each of the city staffs. And it's, uh, it's been a very collaborative, uh, you know, back and forth uh, effort to try and determine in each of the communities. Right now, this study is working in, in Brawley, in Imperial, and here in Calexico to get, these, uh, to get these circulators underway. And so the idea here, of course, is that the initial demonstration uh, pilot or phase would allow, you, uh, would allow the community to see how the route operates and to evaluate the service and, and if there would be future modifications. It's, uh, it's a bus route. You know, it's not, uh, you're not laying down track for a streetcar or anything like that. It's something that could be adjusted as, as conditions change. So some of the uh, planning assumptions that we made, 
The, uh, the orange line would help uh, increase mobility in Calexico. Uh, you know, it would help to improve access to various Calexico businesses, uh, uh, you know, low-income housing, high-density areas, shopping areas, etc. Um, again, building, as I, as I mentioned earlier, building upon the idea of the blue line and green line in El Centro, same, same type of service that is, it sort of serves as a community circulator and also serves as a feeder route to the, uh, to the main IV transit bus routes. You know, route one, here in Calexico, Route 1 is the main, uh, the main one that serves, uh, that serves downtown. And uh, one of the most important things, of course, we wanted to see was to consider the origins and destinations identified as part of the rider survey that we did in February. And we'll show you some of those results in a, in, a, in a slide or two. And then also, of course, consider the input from the public and the stakeholders. And one of the things we heard uh, from the public repeatedly was that uh, there was desire for more service, more transit service, um, and especially to destinations such as Walmart, the, uh, the Clinicas de Salud de Pueblo, and, and, um, and the upcoming Gran Plaza which you heard discussed earlier at, the, uh, at tonight's city council meeting is, is due to open relatively soon. So the, the, the origin destination survey showed the, the dots basically are, uh, if you look here, they're, they're, they're scaled according to the, uh, the level of, um, of people who needed to get on and off at certain locations along the IV transit system. And you could see in each of the various communities, it's, there were no big surprises here. The, the survey results reflected what we'd expected to see. Um, obviously, IVC is a big, uh, big location. All of the, uh, the various shopping and community activities in El Centro and Imperial, up in Brawley. But then here in, in Calexico, we can uh, close in and you could see some of the, uh, the areas that folks mentioned they needed to get to and from. Of course, we just showed it as one destination, but Mex Mex Mexicali, of course, is a huge origin and destination point for much of the uh, IV Transit riders. They come across the border, they go to Third and Poland, and they use the buses to get to wherever they need to, might, might need to get to in, in, the, in the Imperial Valley. And then you could see scattered uh, you know, ridership throughout the community, and of course, m many people mentioned Walmart as well, and then you see right, you know, right in the heart of downtown as well, of course, some of, the, uh, some of the areas that folks were looking to get to. And keep in mind, the OD, the origin and destination survey, that's just one input into what we were looking at. We also kept in mind what we heard at all the various um, public outreach sessions and, and balance it with what we heard at the bus stop workshops from people who were basically on the go. They didn't have time to sit and talk to us for two hours, but we caught them while they were waiting for a bus for you know, five or 10 minutes. So just to set the stage, so to speak, you know, what is the existing service out there in, in uh, Calexico today? And Calexico is a, is a pretty, you know, relatively uh, de decently well-served community with, with transit. IV Transit Route 1 runs from El Centro to Calexico. Um, right now it runs Monday through Saturday. Um, there's a proposal for limited Sunday service coming in, uh, in January of 2014, and that's something that that initial study that I had mentioned earlier, the short-range transit plan, one of the things that came out of that that was, that was hammered home to the uh, to ICTC, to the County Transportation Commission, was that people wanted Sunday service. They wanted more Sunday service out there. And so that's one of the things to address that. And right now it runs about every 70 minutes uh, on weekdays, but this coming October, and that's already a done deal, it, it will run every 35 minutes. Basically, there's going to be, uh, yeah, there's going to be doubled, essentially, the frequency. Um, IV Transit Route 21, that's the, uh, the IVC Express. It goes up to, to the Imperial Valley College. It only operates on school days. The reason the six is highlighted in red there, it used to be four northbound morning trips and four southbound afternoon trips. But recently, again, the um, IV Transit's increased the, the service on those IVC Express trips. It's now six northbound trips in the morning. And, um, and basically, the 21 does the same loop that the one does through Calexico, and I'll get to, I'll show you that in greater detail in a moment. Um, the Calexico Brawley Direct, it's uh, Route 31 and 32. Basically, uh, right now it's Monday, Monday through uh, Saturday. It's a recent extension of service. It used to only run on weekdays, Monday through Fridays, but it's got two southbound trips in the morning and two northbound trips back up to Brawley in the afternoon. Those don't go through El Centro. They go, they, they go straight up 111 and continue up all the way to Brawley and, and serve as an express connection between those, uh, th these two communities. And then, of course, the Calexico Transit Service, CTS, which is, as you can see on the map here, it's uh, CTS 1 and 2. They are two um, very comprehensive loop routes that operate through the community. 
on various corridors of service, and they provide approximately an hourly service on each route. And it's uh, it's a good um, you know it's it's good to remember that they that as you'll see as we go through with the uh, with the proposal for the Orange Line that you see CTS service here on Andrade and on Heber and Blair, etc. So keep that in, keep that in the back of your head there. So the Orange Line in Calexico, the main even though there's a couple of other routes downtown that it could meet, you know, the, the, the IVC express routes, the Brawley directs, et cetera, the main route that we would want to operate the orange line to meet and time with is route one. Because route one right now, it operates every 70 minutes, but it's going to operate every 35 minutes. And so the idea is that's really the, you know, the big kahuna in terms of, uh, you know, what's going on there at, at, uh, at third and Paul, and it's going to be route one. Um, for planning purposes, you know, we're assuming the current terminal at East Third and Paulin, it's still going to be the, the temporary transfer point. Although the route can be, can, can be shifted, can be modified to accommodate any potential uh, changes to the uh, intermodal transfer terminal. There's a study that's going to begin um, this fall for a new Calexico intermodal transit terminal. And so some of that, the exact location of where the transfers happen downtown may shift a bit. So the initial concept, and you know, we, we basically what we did is we looked at uh, what routes one and 21 do through town. We mapped that out. Uh, we said, okay, maybe something different can happen here near City Hall and SDSU. And having listened to what the, the public had mentioned and, and some of the stakeholders about the uh, where they wanted to go, we also you know noted, okay, where are the other locations that are sort of nearby to the existing services? The El Centro Regional Medical Center here. Walmart, the Clinicas de Salud de Pueblo, and then of course Grand Plaza over by the uh, over by the airport. So the first thing we did is we look at the existing IV transit service, and again, as I mentioned, you have the one and twenty one doing this. You know, what, it's a technical term, but it's, it's a collector distributor loop. It's a circulation loop, and in a, in a terminal loop in downtown uh, through Calexico through the through the community. But we wanted to balance that with what CTS service provides. When you look at CTS 1 and 2, you could see that some more of the community uh, is served on the west side. On the west side, there's less of a difference between what the, um, what the services are doing, but you see certainly on the east side of Calexico, there's more differences. And so just keeping those in mind, you know, we, we sort of set the stage and saying, okay, we know what IV Transit does, we know what the CTS services do, let's, you know, let's approach the orange line um, design, the concept design for the orange line, recognizing that these two services are out there. Now, keep in mind, we do recognize there is a whole slew of other services. There's Numero Uno, there's LA Shuttle, there's a whole slew of other transit services that are operating in the community, but they are not providing the sort of the, the hyper-local, you know, very local um, in, intra-city transit that CTS provides and that, and that Route 1 and 21 right now only provide as a terminal loop. So that's what's important to remember there. So as we go along with the, um, the, the first uh, you know, couple of passes for the, uh, for the orange line, we, 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 we came up with a route. It, it basically very closely mirrors the existing 1 and 21 loop. Uh, there are some modifications to it. it at, uh, when it hits uh, Birch, it could use the service road to get into a, to, to more effectively serve the El Centro Regional Medical Center before turning north on Rockwood. Um, somehow it could, it could perhaps serve the Walmart area. It could serve the, the Clinicas de Salud de Pueblo a little more directly by coming up the service road and then back south. And then it would head back south through the community, basically paralleling a lot of what the 1 in 21 does today. However, it would, it would have an extension over to Grand Plaza, and then it would have to go back across uh, State Highway 111 to get over to the, uh, to the transit terminal. And when we looked at the, uh, we had the alignment, we, we, we here, we, the map you saw before just had it without the, uh, the stops. Now you see it with the, uh, with the IV transit routes on there, the 1, 21, 31, and 32. And you can see one of the things we're propo proposing is a little bit of a switch. The orange line would get closer to City Hall and SDSU, whereas the 1 and 21 would actually operate a little further east on 3rd Street. That's just a, a, a minor difference. We looked at where some of the stops could be. And what you see here are potential new stops are marked in red as you go along the route. Existing stops, meaning stops that are already used by the 1 and 21 that would also be used by the orange line are in black. We also considered, you could say we considered 
you know, what happens if service goes up and, and draw their birch, but our recommendation, which is here, the recommended proposal, is to, is to use basically to, to mirror the one in 21 as closely as possible, to use the Encinas corridor and then the Rockwood corridor north of Birch on the east side of Calexico. Again, because CTS services on, on Andrade, on Heber, and on, and on Blair for a good distance. So we just want to, you know, we, no reason to, uh, to uh, necessarily duplicate that. And then when you, these the buffer zones that you see drawn around each of the stops, this is about a third of a mile. Now keep in mind, that's a rule of thumb. You know, this is a desert community. A third of a mile in, in San Francisco is a lot easier to walk than a third of a mile is today when it's a, not if you're going uphill, true. But you know, in 116 degree weather, even downhill, you know, a third of a mile could be. But it's a rule of thumb. It just gives you a sense of how, many, how much of the community is covered by where the, uh, the, uh, the IV transit and the orange line uh, uh, proposed routes are. And we'll go, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do all the questions together at the end. And then we have, um, just to show, you know, when you look at the Andrade corridor, which is where uh, CTS operates, if you take the two services together, you see that a, a good portion of the Calexico area has a good deal, you know, would be, would be covered very well. And the, the key to the orange line, of course, is that it's going to enhance the frequency of the, of the IV transit loop, of the IV transit um, collector distributor loop in downtown. So other aspects of the service. Initially, we're thinking really, you know, Monday through Friday. It would be a weekday service. It would operate um, approximately every 70 minutes so that come, you know, next year, if, 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 if it, whenever it were to be implemented, any time after this October, it would be meeting every other Route 1 trip downtown. It wouldn't meet every Route 1 trip because the Route 1 is going to operate every 35 minutes. Um, but one of the things we did to try and, and keep the cost contained, we're, we're trying to stay to one vehicle. So one vehicle on a 70-minute loop uh, going through town. The fare structure would be the same as uh, the blue and green lines in El Centro, which is basically a dollar per trip and 50 cents for uh, senior citizens and disabled. And the vehicle would be just, you know, similar to what you see here. It would not be the 40-foot full-size bus that you see operating on IV Transit Route 1 or the 21 or the, or the uh, you know, the, the Brawley Directs. It would be a, a, a cutaway vehicle, which would, which would be more of a shuttle bus flavor. Um, the, this is the, the, basically the same list is in the, um, is in the packet for the city council. It's the list of bus stops for some of them, and it's pretty specific. Some of them, you know, what type they are, far side or near side, uh, whether they're existing stops or new stops. And then, of course, some of the, 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 uh, the stops that we had considered on, on Andrade, but we're not pursuing, we're pursuing the, uh, we're recommending mainly the, uh, the stops along the 1 and 21, but that doesn't mean that these stops aren't stops that CTS could use along and driving. And then um, basically, as I mentioned earlier, you know, to coordinate with IV Transit Route 1, what you see is that we had to sort of make, and this is still in the concept stage, I want to make sure that people understand this is a concept schedule, but we want to, that's what we're here for tonight, is to get approval of this concept, is the idea is in the morning you would be meeting the northbound Route 1 trips and in the afternoon, you'd be really more trying to time it better with the southbound Route 1 trips. It's actually, in, in Calexico, it's actually much easier to do in some of the other communities than in some of the other, because, because Calexico is the, the, the terminal. It's the southern terminal for Route 1. Route 2 going through Brawley is much more difficult because there's still a whole bunch of Route 2 north of Brawley and Route 2 south of it. So just to give you a sense of the flavor, in Calexico, it's a little easier to, 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 to coordinate what those schedules would look like. Uh, some of the benefits, obviously, as, as we mentioned earlier, there'd be some increased mobility and accessibility uh, throughout Calexico. It's, uh, it, act, it provides access to uh, Grand Plaza. Um, the riders, as we mentioned, indicated it is, uh, more, des more service, a desire for more service to Walmart, the, the Clinicas de Salud de Pueblo, and of course, um, access to independence and, and Grand Plaza is mentioned twice. But again, I can't tell you how many times people mention Grand Plaza to us. Uh, several other key generators, you know, the, obviously some of the residential areas, east side of town, the, uh, the, the downtown business district, the city hall area, SDSU right behind us here. And, you know, the Orange Line could be part of the, the city's effort to reduce greenhouse gases with SB 375 out there. It's something to consider. Um, the next steps here, as, as, um, as Mark uh, indicated earlier, and I'm going to turn it over to Mark right after this slide, 
but basically um, we want to, we're, we're looking for the, the city council to provide conceptual approval of the of the alignment and bus stop locations. ICTC can then pursue funding. And, and the next steps are to refine and finalize the, the service plan, uh, alignments, frequency, span, you know, sort of cross T's and dot I's, uh, what are the service statistics, um, what the implementation plan and schedule could be, and then also work with the city staff to prepare an updated bus stop inventory so that we could see what amenities might still be needed at some of these bus stops uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the city. And that's it. Turn it back over to Mark, uh, Mark Basel. We'll, and we'll, we'll open to any questions that the council may have. But I wanted to emphasize that uh, this, the orange line is not funded. Um, what, we, what we are hopeful is that the council would approve the concept of the design of the route as well as the conceptual uh, bus stops that we've identified to date. Um, with your approval, that would allow ICTC to pursue the funding for this orange line. It is not funded and we would, you know, we would like to pursue the funding uh, in whatever, uh, through whatever funding mechanism that may be available. So we open to any questions you may okay. have. Okay, let me just uh, preference. This can be a, a contentious issue. There's, there are interests at stake. Um, all I want to say is that we uh, be civilized with decorum. We don't be aggressive. We don't attack. We listen. We express our viewpoints. And, um, and we just be cordial about this as much as possible. But everyone has a right to inquire because this, this is an important issue. So um, we leave it up. Any questions? Well, with regard to the right to inquire, I, as I mentioned to you earlier, Mayor Hunch, is that um, I am concerned, as every time we do have the transportation issues with this council, that we do have a council member that does, his family does own the, I'll call it, competing bus company here in the city of Calexico, and that conflict of interest does make me uncomfortable. I hope that uh, we understand as a council that allowing a member whose family owns a competing bus company is not to the best interest of the citizens to have that ability to be involved in the conversation and much less to vote. So I just want to make sure well, that we, we have a public company. that we all as council members understand that and if you feel the same way as I do that we do have that conflict I would ask that Mr. Castro remove himself from this conversation. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Hurtado duly noted I conferred or I discussed that issue with city attorney. City attorney, would you like to give the, uh, what would you call it, the summation on this point? Well, as I've mentioned in the past, conflicts of interest are to be decided by each individual council member, since he or she is the only one that can, that fully knows their own individual finances and their biases or decision making. And also council members themselves are the ones that would be in individually responsible if they participated and there's a conflict of interest. So it's a matter to be decided by Councilman Castro. I would just like to add also that I personally did see Mr. Castro driving one of the vehicles on Saturday. That's why I am more concerned now that I personally saw that there is direct involvement. Well, Councilwoman, we have to be careful about making accusations. If you saw that, there could be reasons for it. Um, Councilman Castro, do you want to continue to sit on here, sir? I do not have oh. conflicts of interest. All right, sir. I'm going to stay noted. here in order to vote or All right. to discuss. All right. Let's go slow. Let's be cordial. We I have, have questions. A, I, have a, I have another question of the conflict of the Ms. Hurtado. She uh, rented the place or she owned the business. On her address, the business address, they opened the, uh, applied the city to the, they route to the, from the, the public the, the department, uh, public street to the Grand Plaza. So she's engaging with the public the transportation by her, or by, I believe the person's name is Herrera, but by her uh, business address. So uh, which is, she's rented someone, she, uh, she gaining money from the rent. So she's a conflict of interest. All right, you duly noted. Once again, according to our city attorney, duly noted. Let's try not to attack each other, but Councilwoman Hurtado, how do you feel about that? Do I would love for Mr. Kim to be specific who he's talking about, because I think you're way off. Uh, 
Mayor, Mayor. I don't, I don't, you know, Councilwoman Hurtado, I really don't want to engage in that. I just want to ask you, do you, do you want to continue to sit here? Do you feel like, just like he said, I it's not no a conflict, conflict of interest? I have no conflict whatsoever, and I feel absolutely 100% okay. positive. Right. Very I have good. No conflict. We've got that out. We don't need to exchange on this personal stuff, although it is related in a sense. So now I think it's the time for us to direct our questions to our guest. Please be respectful, but ask all the important questions that you want. Who would like to begin? We have a public comment. Oh, we do. Where is that? 